Welcome to the locker room. It's the usual suspects on tonight's show, and although we might not be able to tell you who Kaiser Sosa is, we will provide you some answers to the following. What should Cristiano Ronaldo do next? And for those who say he should leave Real Madrid, where should he go? Then former Arsenal player Martin Keown called Alexis Sanchez football's biggest mercenary. We ask who the winner is in this ongoing transfer saga, and was Real Betis coach Kike Setien wrong to speculate on Real Madrid player Dani Ceballos' state of mind. This and much more coming up, but I will start by welcoming our panel and Thomas Rong and show tactics I expect tonight. A-S-S. -S. Attention, seriousness and sparring. <laughs> I will try. I will okay, try. Okay, all from you lot. Anyway, speaking of ass, according to a poll in Diario Ass, the Spanish Sports Daily, Two-thirds of Real Madrid fans want Cristiano Ronaldo to leave Real Madrid in the summer. Ray, what should he do? I think he should definitely stay for... for, for, for the, certainly... The, this is going to be an important half-season for Ronaldo. Um, he's had the worst half-season in his last nine. And he's still top of the top gun in the Champions League. So he's got... The, this, this next half of the season is important to him and I think to Real Madrid, but for Cristiano, for his legacy. All of this stuff about him wanting to leave, that, you know, we've been through the I'm sad routine with him. This is the time now where his team needs him. His team needs him. And he's got to come through, or else I think he'll be looked back on as um, something of a quitter. And you cannot say that about Ronaldo. And I think if he sees this season out and they produce the, uh, the, uh, the trophies with his inspiration, He'll resign. He'll sign again with Real Madrid. Yeah. He wants to stay with them. He said he wants to retire. Now's the time for him to show it. He wants to retire in a Real that's, Madrid that's shirt. That's if they now, want him. They want that's him. it. I mean, they're, they're this is about him. his team, Gary. The, but the president won't even give him the money that Neymar and Messi's on. So he's saying, I want to go somewhere I'm loved. Right. And the, the one place I can tell you he will be absolutely loved is Manchester because he's already a hero there. He knows the town. He knows he can settle in quickly. He'll be a regular, even if he's not on form. And, and Ray, I'm not sure how, whether he can get back to exactly where he was. But let's say he can't, for example. He'll still be loved, even if he comes off the bench for 10 but minutes. But does he while, want to go to Manchester loved. United to come off the bench? No, I'm saying worst case scenario. I'm sure he wants to go there to do well. Yeah. And United can do well. They're spending lots of money. I as don't we'll think they would give about. him enough money. I think the only team, not? I don't think the only place he could go to get anywhere near the money that he's shown is China. And this is not, not sarcastic, and I don't use the C's and the B's and whatever, but I, I think he needs to find a place right now where there's no Messi. Even Ronaldo's son says that Messi's the best player in the world. And it might sound <laughs> a little weird, but, but, but it is. I think it's healthy for him to go right now. I don't think he's untouchable anymore. Right? As Gary said, they're talking about, which is ridiculous, by the way, that he should be benched, maybe. So where is there no Messi? MLS? China? MLS EPL, is going to be able to If EPL. money is no, and, and Bobo knows this better because he knows, he knows Ronaldo. He loves American sports, the quality of life. What do you still have to prove at 32 Ronaldo? Come to New York, come to LA, be the second Beckham. Help this nation to become better. Come on, Bob. I would never Beckham come up. to America 32 okay. years old. You gotta, it's, it's a lunatic thing. Go, keep staying in Europe. He's, he's a fighter. He, you can see that he's hungry for the Ballon d'Oros, winning titles. He, he, I don't think he's going to go here. I don't think he's going to go to China. I think he's, well, he's not going to come here. I think he's going to go to United or some team in Europe. And he still wants to win. He's 32 years old. He's still young. Maybe Perez isn't going to give him 40 million a year when you're oh. 32 and a half years old. Yeah, yeah. But he's still an amazing footballer. And I think that wherever he goes mm. in Europe, He's going to be the top goal scorer of the team, easy. Yeah. If he's going to be that good of a footballer, why does he need to leave Real Madrid? I mean, because it, sometimes, Ray, after six, how many years yeah, has he been there? Yeah, seven, eight? Seven, yeah. you got to cha change. Yeah, you got to change air. Well, but he, he said mm. himself, gotta change, yeah. I want to retire in a Real Madrid shirt. But they he's say been that, on don't they? No, he's not just saying that. That's Alexis the Sanchez out said the biggest, that. <laughs> the biggest, the most inspiring footballer Real Madrid yeah. has ever had. And that's yeah. a statement in well, itself. Do you want to? I know it's a big thing. Right. Yeah. Does he want to go Steph out on that? If Di Stefano can leave, Ronaldo yeah. can leave. Yeah. Come on. Okay. What, did, what did Coutinho say? Last year? What did Coutinho say a year ago? I'm Liverpool through and through. I'll never leave. But there's a I'll difference <laughs> with Ronaldo at Real Madrid to Coutinho at True. Liverpool. Either way, Kate, say. they've got that. Real Madrid's got to prepare for the future. Yeah. Okay. And, and the yeah. timing is everything. But I'd like to see him sign another one for Real Madrid and win the Champions League this year. And then he's you, you want him to sign a five-year contract? We've got to move. Two years. He's not going to sign for a two-year. 
Well, Next up, trouble in Paris. Why? In PSG's 8-0 win over Dijon, Neymar was booed by parts of the crowd for not letting Edinson Cavani take the penalty that could have made him the club's top scorer. It has once again reopened the debate over the relationship between the two. Some people think this has been blown all out of proportion. Others say Neymar, even though he is the penalty taker, should have given it to Cavani, seeing as though it was a very important goal. Where do you guys stand on this one? Um, I was reading something today that said they did boo him a little bit, but it was like a fun, but they were winning the game easier. They just went, boo, you should be giving it to Cavani. Uh, and then they applauded when the goal went in. So maybe they're making a mountain out of a molehill for me, but <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering, <laughs> I'm just wondering about, about Neymar about Neymar himself, whether he wants to be playing in that league where he beats Dijon 8-0, where he scores four goals, where he's not really got defenders that are, are high quality playing against him every week. I'm not sure that's the right home for him. What, as I opposed really to La Liga, because there are such high quality defenders in La Liga, EPL. when we see in 6-0 results as well no, on a but weekend. I mean, it, with, in, in, in France, it's almost every week he's playing an easy game, whereas, whereas La Liga or EPL... But is that just not, not more testament to PSG and his talent and just how stacked that team is? I, I just, I, th I think it's, if he stays there, it won't be for more than two years before he'll be saying, I need to get out, I need to go you know, back to the, a higher level. The segue that we made into this with, uh, with Cristiano in Real Madrid, you're talking about somebody, if Cristiano does, you know, throw the, the, the toys out the pram and he ends up at Manchester or China or whatever, what better player than Neymar to stick it to Barcelona? Real Madrid would break the bank like PSG did. They'd probably up the ante. They can afford it. He's a perfect replacement. He's arguably the second biggest world superstar in football. It all fits mm. for him to go to Real Madrid. And his whole situation, go ahead, Bob, because no, 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 you've, you, no, you've been there. I, I'm sure that you might have, in your I career, read, have a fight with somebody about no, PKs. No. Come on, be honest. No, no, once, no, it yeah. was this funny thing. One, I was there, <laughs> it was Inter, okay, it was 2-0. I'm not going to say who the player is, okay? 2-0. Okay, the guy up front with me was playing, he scored two goals, it was Ronaldo. So, there's a penalty, 10 minutes to go. I ran 90 minutes, couldn't score. <laughs> so I go get the ball and he comes to me and says, can I take the penalty? I want like this to him, my friend. And he ran away. <laughs> oh. yeah. That was brilliant. He got the message. He got, he got the message. Real quick, this is nothing new. If you look at Slatan and Silva ran that locker room and divided that locker room two years ago when Digne didn't play, Marquinhos on the bench, uh, Saleh left as well. You see the same thing right now. This team could still win the UCL as well. Uh, right. You know, I mean, yeah. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Half of the assists of Neymar were to Cavani. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is a give and take there. The great athletes are competitive. I don't like Silva coming out and saying, you know what, Cavani, you came back late. I want to see if you're going to make the starting 11 again. There, there is this underlying current with the Brazilians that I, I'm not so sure about. It did come back late, though. Do you think Neymar should have let Cavani take that penalty? Though? Yes. You do. do you, out of, out of respect. Nah. He, he was, come on, he was tight with Slatan. He would have yeah. been the all time leading goal scorer. And Neymar was... wanted to be the first player league you know, to be involved yeah, in six maybe, goals. Selfish. Messi, selfish. Messi, selfish. Messi would have given it to Suarez selfish. in the same Let me ask circumstances. It, it comes you know to that? the Champions Messi League semi final and there's a penalty. Who do you want to take? Neymar. Oh, yeah. True. But, but in this yeah. situation Neymar. where you've scored three and you're about to correct. break a record, that's, yeah. that's got to be in the groove. Okay. Christian, if you had a goal scoring <laughs> record coming up, would you want to surpass that record with the penalty? Or would you rather care. it be yeah. a. The you don't goes care. In, goes okay. in, <laughs> in, with your head, with your arm, whatever. I love it. But I think it's just. It's, I would have given Cavani because if he doesn't score this week, he's going to score next week, and that's going to change. But you've got to show something yes, sometimes yes, yeah. to, your, to the, the player you're playing up front with. Correct. So the yeah. next time. Right. All eyes will be on them again. We will. So. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it again here on The Locker Room. Still to come on the show, Jose Mourinho says Manchester United are there in the Alexis Sanchez deal. We discuss that when we come back. And we'll bring you our predictions on the weekend's biggest games. And Danny Ceballos answers back to Betis coach Kike Setien's claims that the player is unhappy. That and more when we return on The Locker Room. Welcome back to the locker room. It's a very special what I love today because a very special player officially hung up his boots and what joy those boots brought. So we are celebrating Ronaldinho and our favourite what I love moments. Ray, this was yours. Yeah, this one was uh, a game that uh, me and Phil Sheen actually uh, covered. Uh, 
at another TV station. This was a piece of sublime magic. He does everything wrong against the boot. He takes it on his chest. Xavi plays the ball in. He's facing the goal, so he could have had a goal. He turns it away from goal, and then with his wrong foot, he puts it in the back of the net. Brilliant. Stupefyingly magnificent. Christian Vieira. This, I chose this. He dribbled four or five plays here in the Bernabeu, scores the goal, they win here. Amazing goal. And one that you'll remember for a long time. Do you remember watching that one? Yeah, watch that game. Yeah. And anyway, he's unstoppable. And because of that performance, I think it leads us on to Gary Bailey's favourite mm. moment. Yeah, at, uh, at the Bernabeu, getting a standing ovation. I can only think of one other player from Barca to do that. That's Iniesta. You have to be one of the all-time greats to achieve that such your biggest rival. And I think that sums up everything this man is. Look at them. At your right, your rival's applauding you. Seriously. Yeah, it's not often you see them applauding even their own players. But here they <laughs> are true. applauding Ronaldinho. Thomas Rungan, what did you go for? I went for Messi's first goal. Fast forward, 500 plus right now. But the most important thing here is the beauty, the celebration, the love for the game of both men. You should look at Messi after he scores his goal. What a brilliant through ball. This one, I think, was actually called back. That's but right. another one was scored later. But yeah. the happiness, the brilliance of the... Look at this. Look at this. They love the game. That's why we watch the game, by the way. And what about those Nike shoes uh, that uh, Messi's wearing? Wow. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. That's our What I Love special on the very special Ronaldinho. All right, let's move on to another topic. Alexis Sanchez, Manchester United manager Jose Mourinho, has confirmed talks are ongoing over a swap deal involving Alexis Sanchez and Enrique Mkhitaryan. Many have had their say on the Chilean. Former Arsenal defender Martin Keown claimed that Sanchez has got to be the biggest mercenary in football. Arsene Wenger says the deal's likely to happen. Pep Guardiola said congratulations to United and the player. But who are the winners or the losers in this deal for you guys? You, Christian. OK, the winner is Sanchez because he got a, what, 16, 17 million euro yep. contract. $500,000 per week. Clean. Wow. I, li wow. I like the clean. The okay. yeah, yeah, clean. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's a mercenary no. because he's finishing his contract with Arsenal. And if he isn't happy with what Arsenal yep. offered him, why should he sign yeah. with them? Yeah. So yeah. that's how the market is. True. That's how the market is. Yeah. If you have the strength not to sign and then sign for more yeah. money in a bigger team anyway, yeah. why shouldn't you go? I don't understand this mercenary thing. So I think that Manchester have won and Alexis Sanchez. Manchester United. Manchester United has won and Alexis yeah. Sanchez yeah. has won. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good signing for United because we struggled on that left side. Marshall's had a, he's been in and out and, and we wanted to get Perisic at the start of the season and didn't get him. And Alexis Sanchez is absolutely brilliant on that left side. Plus, if, if Ibra doesn't come back, and this is now a growing concern, and, and Lukaku gets injured, you can put Alexis Sanchez as your number nine as well. So he gives you all these sort of options. And the other thing is Rashford's young, Martial's young, Pogba's young. You need experience. And he comes with experience at Barca, two Copper America titles. He's just perfect for us, for it, United. It, it, he is. And, and, and I agree with that. In the next year or two, that could compete for a, a, a championship in, in, in Europe. The losers are Mkhitaryan. That for whatever reason, great player didn't fit there. In Martial, Lingard. Rashford, Lingard, all young players don't get, an, again, that much playing time. So in terms of development, I'm not too sure. I think he's going to be their number 10, quite frankly, and let Lingard and, and Martial and, 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 and right. Rashford mm -hmm. be out wide with their pace. That's my opinion, mm. where Mo should use him. Don't Arsenal gain a lot from this move, Ray, if the player's not happy there? Well, he, he was happy for a length of time, for a long time, but he wanted to be rewarded. They didn't come to terms with him. They had plenty of time to plan for this. And But when he's asking for that much money, Kay, maybe Arsenal played their cards and said, you know what, we want him to stay, but we're not paying you that much money. Man United, richest club in the world right now, and uh, they said, yeah, come into our parlour. Uh, He'll be a versatile player, mm, like Gary says. Mm. He's a, he, he hunts the ball beautifully. Yeah. Um, I, I, Man United win out oh, every which way for me. And, and, and also, it's a bargain price. A yeah. pittance, 50 yeah. million for like But then the money that right. Arsenal could then use to spend on other players. And remember, you know, they're going to be losing one. Ibrahimovic's right. paycheck. They're going to be losing Mkhitaryan's yeah. paycheck. Right. That yeah. really yeah. makes right. it... 
yeah. a good bargain. And, and mercenary, I don't get. I agree with you. He's coming to the end of his contract. He's, he's 29. It was an ex Arsenal so. player who said it, remember? Yeah, I'm going to say it. You know, if, if he was 22 <laughs> and going to China, I can go, hang on a second. Why are you just going for the money? But seriously, Correct. 29. But, but, but you know what? In the last six months, he really forced. He was a real disruptive force because he wanted to get out. And I don't know if that's yeah. as classy as it should be. The and that's one of the reasons why Pep, I think, soured on him. Because it would have been paying him more than a player like Kevin De Bruyne right now. And so you can see Pep Guardiola Correct. saying, OK, we're going to step out. I agree with you, Kay. Yeah. The problem is that uh, things are going to come out if you don't sign. Like, yeah, true. the last three, four months, a yeah. lot of things have come out because he's not signing. <coughs> if he's not happy, people are going to still say, mercenary, he doesn't want to stay there, he's not happy. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing. But every time I see Arsenal play, he plays amazing, wins best. games, right. and gives everything. He is. He he was is his a, best year yeah. as well, with 24 goals. He's a game changer. He's always mm. been a winner. Yeah. We've seen it with Chile, with his national team, where he was inspirational. And I think he'll bring back the good old days at, at Manchester United. Real Not quick. by himself, but, but see, Mourinho has improved this team. His, He's got another big jewel in the I want to look at you, Bobo. His powerful running. It's his, amazing. Does it yeah. look a little bit like Ronaldo? Yeah, a little bit. A little there bit. you go. He starts from the and head. that means that Ronaldo's not going to man you. But see how strong Manchester is? Yeah. They knew they could have got him. In 48 hours, they closed. Yeah, right. yeah. That's right. how strong this club is. He's getting the number seven shirt. Ah. Does that mean no Ronaldo, oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. That's two of you just mentioned that one. OK, <laughs> moving on on the locker room. When we come back, the panel give us their predictions on the biggest games of the weekend. I do hope that there's no fence sitting. And we bring you the back and forth between Betis coach Kike Setien and Madrid's Danny Ceballos. So stick around. Real Madrid's Dani Ceballos has hit back at the Real Betis coach Kike Setien who used the young midfielder as an example of how moving to the Spanish Giants at such a young age is not always the correct decision. He said, you see Ceballos's face at Real Madrid now and he's sad. Today the player responded by posting a picture on his Instagram story saying, soy feliz. I'm happy. So I'm asking you guys, I'll come to you first, Thomas. As a coach of an opposing team, should Kike Setien be wading in on the mental state of another player? <laughs> That's a, that, that is a tough one. I don't think he, he should. On that level, there should be a respect among mm -hmm. clubs, yeah. among coaches more than anything else, because we're all in this together at the end of the day, 20 coaches fighting for their positions. I've done it as well. I had a rookie of the year, my first year, Steve Rawson, that I wanted to bring to, to New England. And I got the fire going where he eventually said to management, like Sanchez did, I want to get out, I want to get to Boston. And I ended up getting them. N not the right way to do it, maybe, but mm -hmm. it does happen. This Ceballos, he's going to learn more in one day training with Real Madrid than a whole sure. year with Betis. Sure. So what's, yeah. he, what's his coach yeah. talking about? But he about? needs to play yeah. still, too, Bob. No, okay, but for, can I tell you one thing? Yeah. Of course, a 20 year old has to, a young guy has to play. Sure. But to go and train with these guys, you learn more. Sure. Sure. Then in a year, then next, you can go next. You can go, you can go in his, January his or next year. Is the value going to become the charts. from being a normal yeah. player? Sure. Train with these guys, you're going to sure. become a top but, player. But what what does another manager know about what you do every day? You're both the managers. Right. You can't sit on the outside and go. The player's not. If you're not with him 24/7, if you wrong. don't see him yeah. in training, it is wrong. I, I think Surely. it's a storm in a teacup. He never came out and said it with any bobs. He was just a sat. It was a reflection of the mm. young lad that he used to know, sure. and says, you know what? He didn't look happy. We remember him when he was coming in and he had all the bon vivant and, and he was playing out of his skull yeah. he was playing wonderful and then Real Madrid said come in come into us who I mean he was at the end knows. Well, you Who's don't think there's deny? a little bit of a look at what you could have been playing in yeah. right now because he did say to him there is no point this is at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. before he left there's no point in going to a club where you'll be sub I said this to Ceballos and now look at the situation and it's well is he right well, uh, so Kike <laughs> Setien is right in saying it, but do you think there is a little bit of a but dig? Like, if you'd have stayed yeah, with it, you'd have been playing every uh, week. Of course, and of course you, and you look yeah. at that, and every player that leaves for, for a club and goes, and he's getting, you know, limited time. Hell, look at what Hamas is going through now with Bayern Munich. They, they weren't playing him enough. Hamas left, and he says, I'm happy. The, you know, it's The one a thing I must thing, say, two weeks similar. ago, he didn't dress at all. He was sitting in his stance. Yeah. And, and I saw his face. And I go, wow, 20, 
not, not okay, really being not part close. of it. That's tough. Not close. But this Still year, okay, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next year he yeah. can go play. Sure, maybe in sure, January maybe. or maybe sure. in June he can and go play. Maybe, 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 maybe they need him now. Yeah, but it, maybe it's not up to the yeah the managers to say it. If if the parents say it, I get it. If the press say it, I get it. The other managers, I, I think you should listen to you. Man United, man United, man United. What does Mourinho do? He's not he's not the voice. So let's get you all talking now. Let's get you all talking now about the weekend's games. We've got Inter against Roma coming up. So let's start with you, Gary Bailey. What have you gone for in this game? I've gone for a draw. And by the way, a draw is a result. Oh, okay. It's one of three possible results. Fence it up. Fence it up. Fence it up. Inter struggling. Right, Roma, on, I think, Gary. are a stronger side. Roma are also struggling. Home. No, but not as much as Inter, so I think I'm going to go with the draw. Can, can, can I change my mind in the 60th minute? You're not changing your mind. No. Who are you going Inter for? Inter all the way, baby. All right, what? Thomas Rangan's yep. going for Inter. Ray, who have you picked? Internazionale. Everybody's fit, they're strong, there and uh, Bo Havalero will turn it on. I love Ooh. that player. I don't like his beard, but I love the player. <laughs> Christian Vieri surely won't sit on the fence on this one. No, a zero zero. Both teams are, are scared to lose. Oh, oh, both right. teams are scared to lose. Uh, I'm, saying Inter, I'm saying Inter in this one because I know that Di Francesco doesn't have the best record against. It's either Inter or Spalletti, I remember that. Okay. Close game, though. So who are you picking? One Gary goal. Bailey. Who are you picking? I'm Inter. Inter. I'm going for the home Nobody side. Gary Roma, Bailey, eh? Betis or Barcelona? Oh, you seriously have to ask Barcelona. The way they're playing and the firepower they have. No problem. For Thomas? Me. Barca, yes. I wonder if Ray will say Barcelona too. I'm going to with the best. Whoa! Whoa! I'm going to take a big. Whoa! This what team's a playing Bobo. well. There's your bet right there. There's your bet, Bobo. Being odd. Put money very, on the table. Very Ray. difficult. <laughs> Put the money Took on the table. Time. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a bet with him. Betis. The Betis comes back in shocks. Ooh. And Atletico Madrid go. We're back in Ray, this. They've We're back not kept, in this. They've not kept a clean sheet against Barcelona in La Liga since 2002. Yeah, I've got something to say to you, K. Murray. <laughs> Katia, Kayeta, Kaya, Kayata, eh? Kayate. Kayate, Roca. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Uh, 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 it was fluent, Rock. <laughs> I was trying, Thomas. You did, you did well. That was in Jordi <laughs> Spanish. Yeah. Julio Jordi. <laughs> It's going to be a very, very hard game. 3 0 for Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on this one, I think we'll be in for quite the ride, but I've gone for Barcelona. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're on your own there. That's after what PK said. Callate. Callate. Callate la boca. Do you know any other Spanish, Ray? Um, <laughs> Escuche. Ah. Escuche. Uh, mira. 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 Escuche. ¿Qué más? Hola, buenos días. Vamos, vamos, vamos. All right. Vamos. Make sure you join <laughs> us this weekend. We have plenty for you to be viewing oh, on the no. locker room. Much live action. Locker room on Monday. Extra at the weekend as we wrap up all the highlights. Ray will be on the call this weekend. Who knows what he'll be singing or if he'll be waxing lyrical with the Spanish as well. Hey. Yeah, will be Oye, back come on back. To look back at it all. We'll see you then. See you later. Ciao, ciao. By the way, I like your beer.